were you stopping also? I mean, stopping breads and, well, or pastas or anything at the same oh, time? Oh, yeah. I, I started uh, cutting out all grains, except I, ha I do have to say, see, because I thought I was never gluten intolerant, you know. That was, okay. that was those other, other people. people. <laughs> I, I was writing this book to help them, not me. You know, <laughs> denial is a fabulous thing. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. I'm in a lovely Victorian in Nevada City with Polly Halstead, who's an executive chef and the retired owner of a Napa Valley-based catering company called The Best of Everything. I'll bet it was the best of everything. Polly is the author of a book that's just out called Primal Cuisine, Cooking for the Paleo Diet. It's beautiful, and we will get into this, but thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Well, this, this book is exciting, and I understand that you had a cookbook in the works that took away sugar, no sugar, no gluten, and then something happened in your own life that just turned you sort of in this direction. Tell us about it. Uh, well, uh, to begin with, um, uh, just to back up a little bit, my mother had schizophrenia, mm. a very uh, debilitating mental disease. So I always wanted to find out what was the reason for that. And I read a lot of books on the brain and all this stuff, so I was always uh, searching. I was living in Hood River, Oregon in 2009, and I read The Ultramind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman. And he was talking about how uh, toxins that we take in uh, to our body, like gluten, sugar, uh, all kinds of other things, go through the blood-brain barrier and create various kinds of mental wow. illnesses, ADD, autism, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. And I thought, wow, well, that is a clue. So I began to write my first cookbook, uh, which was gluten-free and sugar-free. And while I was writing that book, someone handed me this book, Primal Cuisine, uh, Primal Body, Primal Mind, mm -hmm. written by a Nor uh, Nora Gagadis. She's a Portland-based uh, neurofeedback specialist. Mm -hmm. And uh, this book changed my life. I realized at that time that the paleo or primal diet was the diet that we evolved on and eating uh, small amounts of meat, high in nutritious fats was the key to our evolutionary success. So is this, this, is, this is what she's saying here in, in Primal Body, Primal Mind? Yes. Um, now, uh, in the back of Nora's book, she had a couple of pages on this uh, genetic disorder called pyroluria. It has a lot of different symptoms, and it's one, uh, one of the things that causes schizophrenia. That really got my attention, wow. and uh, I had about 20 of the 30 symptoms in the book. I had suffered from depression all during my life and had a, a lot of other health issues. I called her right up, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, Nora, my mother had schizophrenia. I have all these symptoms. I would like to come see you. So I did. We had a wonderful first lunch together eating raw fish. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and I told her my life history, my health history. She said, we have to get you tested. So we did all kinds of tests. Uh, we tested my, uh, my uh, sugar levels. I was highly hypoglycemic, uh, uh, no surprise there. My vitamin D3 levels were really low. Um, and the test for the pyroluria is a urine test, a $50 urine test. Uh, it's very simple, but I, ha I had the genetic marker for the pyroluria. So I really saw uh, then that this is a 
a, a genetic disorder. And also the genetic disorder figures into ADD, autism, mm. bipolar disorder, a lot of brain issues, and not just uh, schizophrenia. So uh, the remedy for that was to put me on vitamin B6 and zinc because the pyroluria uh, makes you excrete vitamin B6 uh -huh, and zinc, uh -huh. and those are really essential nutrients for brain health. So at any rate, that was a huge um, uh, clue to my mother's mm. problem that could have probably been alleviated. And a sure. lot of uh, the problems that people are having with their brains now can be allevi alleviated with nu nutrient-dense uh, therapy. But I believe um, the primal diet will also help. So Nora got me started on the primal diet. Yeah. I want to ask a question about that. You said you were hypoglycemic. So in addition to those supplements, did you have to cut back or out the sugars well, and, or the grains? Well, immediately I stopped the sugar. And for me, um, the interesting thing was all my sugar came in these little uh, units of cookies, uh, scones, uh, uh, all the sweet things. So. Yeah. I experienced about three months of withdrawal, of which I thought it was just the withdrawal from sugar. But now I realize I was also withdrawing from gluten, gluteal morphine. From, from the gluten in the grains in the flour, yeah. in the wheat flour? Yes, I believe I was withdrawing more uh, from the gluten and having the withdrawal symptoms uh, because of that. So uh, just a question, had you, were you stopping also? I mean. Stopping breads and well, or pastas or anything at the same oh, time. Oh yeah, I, I started uh, cutting out all grains except I ha I do have to say see because I thought I was never gluten intolerant you know that was okay. that was those other, other people, people. <laughs> I, I was writing this book to help them not me you know <laughs> denial is a fabulous thing but <laughs> it's a very it's a very safe place and you kind of have to get things in the stages when you're ready for it I mean I want to be, be kind to yourself. Well, gluten, I mean, um, Nora has a phrase in her book where she says, gluten intolerance is rarely obvious to the afflicted. Mm. And that was me. Uh, uh, uh. But uh, at any rate, so I thought if I was just eating sprouted bread, it would be okay. So I had a few sandwiches a week because uh, I really like my sandwiches. So I didn't give that up. All other grains uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, went out the window. Um, and I really, I really didn't miss them. I did miss the sugar, though. I definitely. I was say, how is that? Because thing. some, some consider I, I, it the, the most addictive substance going. It I think is, you may have said that in your own book. It's still here. problematic for me. I, I have to say, I, I still mm. love uh, uh, sweet things. Although I have really, really done, done well. Um, Good for you. I'm going to interrupt you for just a second because mm -hmm. it, to, to let our viewers know that I've been on a primal-like diet for about two years now. And the difference for me, because I have a sweet tooth, I like all the same things that you just listed, the grainy, the starchy versions yeah. of, of sweets. Um, not a candy person, but yeah, give me a scone and I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. And what I found is that having enough good quality fats has really cut my sweet tooth urge a lot, a lot. And so I just wanted to share that is that Making up for the sugars with some really good coconut oil um, has has really has really cut that that, that craving. That was the key to the whole thing. Uh, she had a recipe in her book, which I I tweaked and put it in my book. But it's these little kind of nut balls, uh, and so I immediately um, upped my fat intake. Okay. Um, okay. And so I would eat about four or five of those a day every time I had a. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. craving. Mm -hmm. um, I started eating more butter, more eggs, uh, all that kind of stuff. And interestingly enough, when I added the fat, and actually, you know, I was adding calories. We were yes. like so afraid of fat and oh, calories. Yes. Yes, but yes. when I did this, I lost about 12 pounds without trying. Yes. I mean, I yes. wasn't on a diet. I was just changing what I ate. And that was a real revelation. Mm -hmm. My body mm -hmm. totally uh, readjusted on its own. It was like, oh, God, thank you for feeding me this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and it really helped. The fat is what 
cut the cravings and uh, help me do this. Mm -hmm. You, was it a bumpy road to, to get off the sugars? I mean, that three, I can... three months, I would say, of craving. A, a lot of people don't mm -hmm. have that long a time period. Uh, but I have to pat myself on the back. I stuck to it. But the most amazing thing uh, for me was three months later, the depression lifted. I had been on medications for years, and finally I just threw them away. I wasn't going to take them anymore. I thought, you know what? I'm going to tough it out. I'm not going to take this stuff anymore. Uh, but I, I was still ha had depression that would com come mm -hmm. and go. And, mm -hmm. you know, it has just plagued me all my life, and I know it's plaguing other people too. So I just want to say, when the depression lifted, it has not come back in four years. It was like, wow, that was it. The primal diet really helps the brain. <laughs> so, Whoa. Yeah. Congratulations and yes. hooray. And hooray for everybody, everybody. because, uh, you know, we don't need those medications anymore. We can change uh, our brains uh, with diet. Mm -hmm. So so the, the, the no, no Gluten, No Sugar cookbook transformed, after you did, into what the primal cuisine? Yes. Yeah, you really, really changed your orientation. Uh, yes, and uh, I a year ago I met Nora's um, publisher. Uh, she had republished her book through Inner Traditions and Bear Company. They did, uh, oh, yeah. took me on, and I made uh, my book to go very closely ah, with what she is talking ah, about in her so. book: the protein requirements, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. no, absolutely no added sugars. Um, so I would say, and I would, and I also note because looking at very little dairy, you're very very selective on the dairy you have. Yes, I'm casein butter. intolerant. I also found that out mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. now I have switched over to sheep or goat's milk, mm -hmm. or almond milk, or or coconut milk. But you know, I made it a, a little flexible because I know some people still do dairy. I use full fat whipping cream. Uh, butter. Full fat, yes. <laughs> yes. Full fat with I, I, I noticed. But, I noticed that. Um, but some people can't have any, so there are substitutions. So I want to go to, go to a, 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 a primal question. What is, what, what do you mean by a paleo diet? Okay, well that refers to, you know, uh, the Paleolithic time uh, when Homo sapiens were were hunting and gathering, basically. They, we were hunters and gatherers. And uh, so our, our, prime, our prime diet was wild meat and fish. It was some foraged plants and tubers, some nuts, seeds, and some berries. But we really didn't have a lot of fruit at the end of the Ice Age, <laughs> <laughs> if any. And sometimes they could find some. Uh, but the distinction is that the Paleolithic diet was a fat-based diet, a ketogenic diet. At that point, we did not, uh, we, our, our metabolism was not glucose-based. So ketogenic meaning we're, we're burning, burning the fats yeah. for our energy. Ketones are the energy units of fat. And so this is a really hard thing for us to grasp. Yeah, it's we, almost incomprehensible. But we, Nora goes into a lot of what that is. We've all been in living on carbs. Yes. Civilization mm -hmm. gave us the grains, and yeah. ever since, so yes. it's like conceiving of fats is not the enemy, and that we survived on them is. You have to turn all your thinking upside down. Well, cholesterol is really good for the brain, the good cholesterol, and it's really good for the heart. Um, so. I'll, People don't realize this, and I would say uh, doctors are making a big mistake putting people on statin drugs and cholesterol-lowering drugs because they happen to cause more stroke, actually. By being on the drugs? Yes. So in the paleo diet, just after the ice ages, you were saying we ate, you said it was a fat-based. Fat-based. Central. They ate the fatty parts of the animal first, the brains, the liver, uh, the bone marrow especially uh, uh, because that was the nutrient rich and it kept them from being hungry. You know, the, the biggest problem with being a hunter-gatherer was if, if, you, uh, if the herd ran faster than you, you were in <laughs> trouble. So, so they always ate the fatty part first and that really nourished them and helped them uh, stave off starvation. 
I, and I will add a personal note on that is the ketogenic diet, the way we're eating with high level of fats, uh, you don't get the carb cravings like, like when you're based on glucose, as you said. And I can get a sense that I could go some days without, without being troubled by not having food. Well, they could, and they, the body they did. That's they what did. they had They'd to do. That's how they survived, that. you know. And the other thing, uh, the main thing, I think, that's the important distinction of that time. Of course, it was a pristine environment. Everything was organic. Uh, the animals totally ate grass, and so their meat and fat was omega-3 fatty acid. Our brains evolved or became large on omega-3 fatty acid mm -hmm. and gave us uh, the ability for speech, which the other primates do not have. So in a way, you're saying that by eating those animals, bless them, they contributed to the larger human brain? Is yes, what saying? there's no doubt. Absolutely. Thank it's you a very scientific much. fact. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, because... Primates, other primates' brains are composed of omega-6 fatty acid. Mm. We mm. still need this. However, due to the fact of our carb-rich diet and everything, uh, all the uh, grain oils and all of that, we are not eating omega-3 fatty acids in the correct ratio anymore. So that is contributing to a lot of our brain problems here in the U.S. And probably other health problems too, but yes. for hold on a second. So, so we evolved to eat in this way. So what, so what you're saying is if we, that things like a vegetarian diet, can that, can that satisfy our evolutionary needs for, for fats and so on? Can vegetarianism or veganism do that? Uh, well, uh, if, if you're not uh, so strict a vegetarian that you can't eat eggs or maybe some dairy or butter or something like that, uh, but you really still probably would have to supplement mm. with some omega-3. Mm. I know you could probably get some of those from f uh, flax yes. and a few other sources. I think walnuts have some. But really, uh, it's very tricky to get enough uh, mm -hmm. omega-3s. And with a vegetarian diet, it's heavily grain-based. And once you start eating grains, you know, the omega-6 pro uh, profile becomes a little heavy, so it's tricky. But I would say vegans are the ones who are going to have a real problem. They don't have omega-3s in their diet in optimum amounts. Mm -hmm. They're going to be mm -hmm. deficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it may not show up right away? Uh, For some people? I mean, people may vary on... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know whether you've ever read Lear Keith's mm -hmm. book, mm -hmm. um, but... Um, uh, her spine started to disintegrate on a on a vegan diet. I lived with a, a woman up in Hood River, Oregon. She had never eaten meat, rarely ate eggs, and I she had severe bipolar disorder. Mm. She had mm. autoimmune disorders, all mm. kinds of things, and I honestly believe it was because she never ate any animal animal mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that part of the story, I'm sure that fits in with the gluten. Well, actually, we're getting now to sort of what, what, what can one eat, what does one eat in a, in, a, in a paleo diet and what does one not eat in a paleo diet. Maybe we start with that. What, what, do we, what, do we, what do you kick out of? What do you leave out when you're doing a paleo diet besides uh, junk foods? Yes. Um, well, I eliminated grains. Okay. Any oils made from grains. So basically any processed food. Absolutely no processed so food. So no flour, no packaged goods, basically. Right. right. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. No added sugars. No added sugars. Yeah. So no honey, no maple syrup, no agave. There's a big warning on agave now. Uh, it's sort of like high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> so. and, and probably also, I would guess that, that a paleo would be... Um, low fruit, because fructose is, and they're paying more attention to fructose being yes. um, unhealthy for us. Well, a lot of people are, make smoothies and they put all this fruit in or they're, they're juicing a lot of fruit and it's, it just adds a lot of sugar to the diet. I think it sort of exacerbates hypoglycemia and uh, weight problems and diabetes. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really essential for people with those problems to keep fruit to a minimum. I mean, I, I might eat a half an apple a day or something like that. Um, and that's about it. We kind of figured our paleo ancestors, what they had 
Well, we, we live, in, live, in, live in the woods, and so what do our local people, what would they have been eating? F fish, deer, other birds, and blueberries, so on. And, wild and blueberries. And the blackberries only when yeah. they came out for uh, the, the week, if you could get them away from the bear. <laughs> we have a blackberry bush along the fence there, and boy, we love it when uh, that happens. Yeah, so, <laughs> so. But, but you know, it's such a short period, and so Very that's short. not going to pull you through the winter. And so no. what we think of for fruit is, Okay, how many blackberries would we get this season? Kind of a, a level for, for, for the sugars. It's a seasonal treat. It is. It really is. Yeah. So you mentioned the grain oils. I want to go back for a second. We've been, been reading in this other book that you shared with us, Deep Nutrition. Kate Shanahan, who's an MD and looking at molecular level of things, yes. says that vegetable oils, meaning oils from seeds like canola and sunflower and cottonseed and safflower, are really quite toxic. They're yes. processed foods. Yes. They're not natural fats. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, because of the way they're manufactured. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, cooking with some of those oils changes the chemical uh, constituency of them, and they uh, become, have free radicals. They turn into a trans fat or whatever. So when we go into the kitchen, we'll talk about the good fats that we can cook with. Okay. Well, that leads us into what is in a primal diet then. If we're not going to do that and we're not going to have, I should add, no GMO, no genetically modified right. organisms and right. so on. Organic. Organic. Okay. Organic. What's in? Organic. Yes. Um, what else is in that diet? Well, um, I would say my book is a vegetarian diet, non-starchy vegetarian diet, organic, with small amounts of, of nutrient-dense protein. Okay. And one of the things Nora mentions in her book is just the amount of protein that we need at each particular meal. Uh, normally we need 45 to 75 grams of pure protein. This is not the caveman diet. It's in, not in a meal or in a day? In a day. In a day, okay. This isn't the caveman diet. It's not big <laughs> slabs of steak. It's not the Atkins diet either. Mm. It, mm. Um, Nora said we can only metabolize about 25 grams of pure protein per meal. If, uh, if it's more than that, then our body can't handle it and it will actually turn to sugar as well uh, because we can't metabolize oh, the protein oh, oh, fast oh, enough. So I've really uh, talked about that in the beginning of the book because mm -hmm. what I've done is I've converted the recipes so that there's two or three ounces of the pure protein, you know, per person per recipe. So okay. people who don't read the first part of my book and go cut Just back go to the recipes. recipe, they're going like, where's the protein? <laughs> but yeah, it's very important. So it's small amounts of protein, lots of vegetables, and an equal amount of fat in the recipe. So butter, cream, mm -hmm. eggs, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some cheeses or whatever, avocados, uh, to add uh, with the protein because uh, uh, the fat helps metabolize the protein. Okay. Yeah, so okay. it almost okay. needs to be in a 50-50 ratio. That's what it was in the primal diet. They had about 50 to 60% of uh, fat in relationship to by, the meat. By size? I mean, is it we're looking yeah. at by volume? Yeah. It's like this much protein, I know. this much fat. Shocking. Mm. I mean, look at the Inuits, uh, the, uh, sure. yeah. Sure, sure. High-fat diet. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you give us modern amounts of protein. I mean, what yeah. you're suggesting in yeah. here. The good fats, lots of vegetables. Yeah. Fruits really kind of more as just little condiments or little little uh, treats. Sure. There are a low. few recipes have a little bit of fruit in um you know, I did it that way. If you don't want any fruit in the recipe, just you take do. it out. And at the back of the book, the desserts, uh, some fr uh, some fruits, berries mostly, and uh, yeah, so moderate fruit. What I would imagine that a lot of people wonder about is um, <laughs> when you're used to a grain-based diet, I mean, as we are in America, the standard thing, and the whole, the whole low-fat push, you know, which of course means you're going to want to eat more grains just to get your calories, just to get some energy and calories. It, it, there's a big, there's a big mind shift here. And I'm, I find, I'm wondering whether, you know, the response you've gotten to your book and your recipes, whether people 
are able to sort of make that transition, what do they think of it? You well, anything? you know, I, it's hard to wrap your mind around the idea of not eating grains. Uh, my boyfriend, Kurt, is a perfect example. When we met about three years ago, you know, uh, his diet was heavily uh, grain-based. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the way I cooked, no grains. He loves it. He didn't miss the grains. In fact, the real uh, event was when he asked me not to bring bread home anymore, not to buy bread. We wow. have a totally grain-free house wow. now. Wow. And uh, he's lost uh, about 30 pounds. Well, I mean, <laughs> as we got onto, we learned about this kind of diet actually through Leah Keith, some of her sources that led us towards this. And it's, it, sounded, it made sense to me. You know, it said, worth trying it. And I lost 40 pounds over several months. Robin's lost maybe 10 or 20 pounds. We certainly lost it in our middle, yeah. which is where you don't want all the extra fat. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and bit by bit, I, it's like, well, the grains went out, and then anything sugary went out. I mean, I, the honey, even the honey went yeah. out because... And what I found is that my sweet tooth, where that threshold went down so low that... What, what is in, in our diet on occasion is a little bit of almond flour, mm -hmm. which can be yeah. like a grain-like yes. feeling, uh -huh. and, and unsweetened. It, yes. And I, uh -huh. I'm still astonished by that. And I'm astonished by, every when I got a little hungry as I was losing this weight and on this diet, Robin would say, have some fat. And I, that was the hardest battle, yeah. was right here. It's yes. like for 50 years, for most of my life, it's been low fat is the good thing. Yes. And, and saying, fat, am I going to get fat or, you know, that was the hard thing. It was, yes. was right here. It is so, uh, it is so amazing uh, the way that works. And, you know, as you go along, your, your brain reacclimates to just the natural sweetness in foods, and you begin yes. to enjoy it. Kurt yes. and I were commenting the other night, you know what? Just the natural taste of food tastes so uh, good. Yeah, yeah. Does. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, you're going to get me hungry. All right. Why, don't we, why don't we go on to the kitchen and take a look okay. at some of these ingredients we're talking about All right. and, and make us something? Would okay. You? Would you? We'll try it.